she founded Minority Atheists of Michigan and then the Detroit affiliate of Black Nonbelievers. And I, I think this next thing, next thing I'm going to say is probably the most appropriate way I can think to introduce you, having just met you um, like a day ago. Uh, she is a motherfucking badass. <laughs> Everyone welcome Bria Crutchfield. If you're a repressed secularist who think I'm supposed to be a lady, you're fucked, I'm a woman. <laughs> I say what I want, and I'm gonna say how I want it. But even having said all of that, I hope you are able to glean something from this presentation. So, I'm Bridget, but I'm mostly known as Bria in the community, and you know, I came into that name because I worked for the telephone company, and your friends can call in and ask you to hook them up on their phone bills, their internet bills. So we were allowed to be given an alter ego. And so that's how I received Bria. But it proved to be useful when I wanted to be low key on the internet. And then I grew to really like it better than my middle name, so I just included Bridget Bria online. So now most people call me Bria, but it doesn't matter. Bree, Bree, Bria, Brittany, Brenda, I answer to all of them. <laughs> Secular burnout, that is real. I didn't think it was real. Um, everything that I've done, I've done hitting the ground running. And I set unreasonable expectations upon myself, like most overachievers, because your intention is to change the goddamn world by yourself, because everyone else is taking too long. <laughs> so let me just give you a little backstory. As you heard, I was a Jehovah Witness. I was in that strong since the age of five. So speaking before a crowd, it's so easy. I don't get nervous. I get this adrenaline pumping because I've been talking since a little, what do they say, knee high to a grasshopper without fear. But being a Jehovah Witness, there is an expectation of perfection in everything you do. And even though I left the Jehovah Witness organization, that expectation of perfection didn't, leave, didn't stay. And through my life in school, into the church, I allowed these unreasonable expectations to overtake me. I think if you heard me speak yesterday, you know I'm passionate. I go hard, if I believe in it, if I believe in you, I'm going all the way, gangbusters. I'm going to defend you to the death. Whether you're related to me or not, if it's an ideology or not, if I'm going to act like an unofficial spokesperson for a suave baby powder deodorant, if I believe in it, I'm going to put my name behind it. Out of that, I've becoming a mediator and a voice of reason, which is funny because I've been called ghetto, I've been called hood, I've been called a hood rat, I became, I've been known as ratchet. But let me tell you something about those people that you call hood ratchet, hood rat. That's a goddamn compliment. And I'm gonna tell you why. You will never find a fucking hood rat that's a coward. You're not gonna find someone who's ghetto that gives a fuck about what you think. It's, it's, you're just not gonna find that. I've never, ever cared about what anyone thought about me. My own competition was myself. That's it. My mom and dad will confirm, nope, yep, she absolutely gave no fucks from the time she was six, seven years old, she just gave another goddamn fuck. 
you know, as, through my journey in this community, I just noticed the similarities. Like, oh my God, it is so much like Facebook. It is so exciting. It's so new, and I get to learn, 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 learn. I got to reconnect with people that I met on Facebook, establish these relationships, but to go into a conference and see these people face to face, isn't it like a family reunion sort of, or a class reunion? When you meet these virtual relationships in person, I had to learn to navigate. I didn't know there was politics in the secular community. And when you give me rules, you have told me that I'm gonna fuck up every one of them. Don't talk like that. You don't fucking tell me how to fucking talk. <laughs> you don't tell, oh, that's so-and-so. Uh, don't he put his legs out, his pants on one leg at a time? I'm not easily impressed. I'm not impressed by your title. I'm not impressed by your book. What impressed me? What have you done to help people? That impresses me. That, you want to impress me? Tell me how you helped someone and didn't talk about it online. See, that's the story I want to hear. I don't want to hear the shit that's going to give you an accolade. I want to hear about these stories where you went out into the community and gave a part of yourself without expecting anything in return. Sadly, I hardly hear those goddamn stories. I get to meet new people. That can be good. Like my grandson said, well, it could be nicely or badly. <laughs> the camaraderie. When there's a death, Nikki, we all came together so quickly. I was never so proud of the secular community in recent times as I was at the loss of Nikki Massey. Why can't we be like that all the time? I don't know. But I'm sure as hell am proud to be part of this community at the passing of Nikki Massey. And then to come into this atmosphere yesterday, and she wasn't goddamn forgotten. Secularists, you guys did me proud. And you better hold on to that because you ain't going to get that many goddamn compliments from me. <laughs> Thank you for keeping her light burning. Y'all showed out. A sense of belonging. All of these networks, my high school, my job, my family. And what? There's black atheists. Black non-believers. I thought they were just one kind of atheist. Women? They got, what do you mean they got a group for women? They have organizations. I was, my mind was blown. Who knew that there were sub-communities and sub-groups in the secular community just like Facebook? I had no idea. Yeah, now the bad part. The caveat. They're not so good. It really is like Facebook. It can consume you. It can suck you right down to your bone marrow if you let it. If you're an empath like me, you want to help everybody. Do you know how many GoFundMe's I have contributed to and I don't know these people in the community? I've never contributed to this many crowd, crowd was it crowdsource funds people? What is it? I've never. And I was like, damn. I thought atheists, you know, pretty much had their shit going on. I didn't know they struggled just like everybody else. But unlike the Christians, we don't question what, I didn't, I didn't question what you do with the money. You need it, you got it. But it came to a point where my partner was like, oh, well, if you give your money to everybody, well, how the hell are you going to pay your bills? That's the struggle of being an empath. Yeah, you learn things. And then you wish you hadn't learned those things. No, no, so-and-so isn't a racist. Don't, please don't, 
Please don't tell him he's a racist. Don't. No, please, please don't. A misogynist. What you mean a misogynist? He hate women too. But, but we had a good time at the conference. It don't matter if you had a good time, Bree. He's fucked up. No, don't tell me that. Drama. Drama. Ooh, honey, y'all the, we are the worst. We're our own reality show in this community. Ooh, from the sex, the lies, the, and I don't know about videotapes, but the Twitter and, ooh, the, the, the Patios blogs and the comment. And we just, us black atheists just, we just get our popcorn and just read all your shit. We just. <laughs> I'm like, but they say that black folks is fucked up, but they're just as fucked up as we are. <laughs> the drama. Can, see, see that's, that's, that's the part that saddens me because now I'm extremely apprehensive. Well, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm apprehensive anymore. I don't introduce anybody to our community anymore because I'm embarrassed. The same embarrassment I had when I was a Christian and, you know, I'm supposed to go to the highways and the byways. Fuck them highways and byways. They're going to take care of themselves. And that's the same attitude I have about our community. Why would I bring somebody into this community when I know what the end result's going to be? They're going to be disillusioned just like I am. Divisiveness. Oh, oh my goodness. I don't even... Try, if, if your thread isn't about children or your, your, your cats or, I don't know, your, your latest exercise venture, I really try not to comment because it doesn't matter what you say. Now, come on, y'all. Am I lying? Am I? It doesn't matter what you say. There's always going to be that one goddamn asshole <laughs> that's going to take the meaning and the context out your shit, and they're going to turn it and stretch it and then interject their own motherfucking commentary into your three-word goddamn comment, and now they fucking derailed this whole cat blog post, and now people are choosing size because you spelled two T W O instead of T O O and not capital T O, and you didn't use a semicolon. This shit is nuts. How the fuck you choose sides on that shit? Tell, am, am I lying? Stop, talk, am, I mean, I can be corrected. Tell, am I? Shit. Friends, today? Well, well, you find out you got black the next day. It happens. It happens. And I remember at, initially in this community, I was traumatized because, see, I put these expectations on myself. Like, wasn't I the, the good black girl? I wasn't the angry black woman. I don't want to be that stereotype. And I've seen that I've been blocked. And I think the part that hurt was that I thought there was a relationship. Maybe it was just me. And I didn't even get like a heads up like, you know what, fuck that shit you said. I'm blocking your ass. I mean, that's, that's just my world. That's just how I would prefer it. I can see if I did some blatantly offensive, like fuck you with a sick dick kind of comment. Block the fuck out of me. I, I get that, but I, yeah. Now I'm like, bitch, I don't give a fuck, whatever. It can be overwhelming. Oh my gosh. If you don't have a support system in this community, get one. And your support system, it, it can be just one strong person. I'm fucked up. So I can't put all my shit on one person. I got Mandisa, I got Greta Christina and Ingrid, they come as a pack. <laughs> I got Monette Richards. I mean, I have women in my life who are strong as fuck. And you know why I intentionally have allowed these women into my life? 
Because when I fuck up, they're going to show let me know about it. Say, so, yeah, I'm up here. I'm giving a presentation. Oh, that's cool and cute. But see, what people who, who's sitting in the audience don't understand is we have issues too. And if you allow the accolades and the affirmation to make your head enlarged, as I've seen in this community, you will have a long way to fall. So when I introduce myself, when I engage you in talking to you, that's not a show. I really give a fuck when I ask you your name. Zia, Z -Z -Z Zia, hey girl. Ryan, Brian, secular bear cats, hey. I don't play because why I'm in it for the people. And understand we have children watching us. My grandson, Blake, is going to fuck y'all up if he come into this community. He is worse than me. If you didn't hear me talk, he's a fucking five-year-old asshole. <laughs> I ain't playing. He really is. So where am I? Fuck it. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck if this community implodes, explodes, reaches a stalemate, twerps. I don't give a fuck. I am so apathetic. I'm so apathetic when it comes to this community, which is so fucked up. But this is where I am today. Now, don't distort that to mean whoever that device's person is in this audience that's going to try to distort my words. Let me clarify. I care about the people. I don't give a fuck about the bullshit. And if you are one of those shit starting, rock throwing, hide your hands type of blatant, lying, pathological motherfuckers, I don't give a fuck about you either. Because you have contributed, contributed to the demise or pending demise of what used to be a strong community by all appearances when I first come here. And now we're as much of a joke to the community as the church is. How? Sick of y'all bullshit. So? I had to do some non-existent soul searching. I had to come to have a come to breathe Jesus meeting with myself because I noticed I was okay at work. I was okay with my family, with my family surroundings. But every time I thought about doing something for the secular community, I had a physiological reaction. I was not happy. And I figured, well, you know, Bree, you've been doing this shit since like 2011. You probably just need a goddamn vacation. That's all it is. Uh, no. When that thought entered my mind about cleaning house in my secular life, I thought I had lost it. I didn't know my mind was going into self-preservation. And I immediately eschewed that thought. But you know your mind. Your mind will let you believe you running shit temporarily. And then they gonna circle that wagon and come back and ask if you ready to deal with this bullshit now. And that's what happened. I wasn't depressed. Excuse me. I really had to say, Bree, are you depressed? Because I did go through, in my 20s, a hell of a depressive, I was in a dep no, no, I'm not depressed. Sad, but no, I'm, I'm not depressed. But I was fucking tired mentally, just mentally. Just every time I read something, ugh. My disappointment soon outweighed 
the joy. I was just that cheerleader for everybody. You need me, send me an email, text me, call me. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. Now when somebody needed me, I was like, fuck. Oh my. That's not typical for me. That's not a typical reaction for me. I became less active. Bree, can you? Nope. Bree, we like to? Nope. Bree, do you think? Nope. I ain't want no parts. Apathy. Going back to that previous slide. Bree don't give a fuck. I wish I could. But what I say yesterday, they're not even discontinued. They haven't even expired. I just ain't got fucks to give. Because when I did give them, people shit it all over them. And I'm questioning, 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 questioning. What did I do? Why am I feeling like this? I mean, you guys, see, you guys see the end result. I wish I could give you insight. I wish I could verbally convey to you how struggle, how much struggle I was enduring, especially with the, the, pol the racial issues with the police and seeing the racism come from this community, from people who said they were my friends. And let me tell you something, as a racial minority, let me, let me give you this, this story, and I always say, true story, because my stories be so wild that people think I'm fabricating or embellishing. No, true story. I used to be a stripper, and I don't mean paint. <laughs> uh, I danced for five years, and I danced, one of my early uh, dancing days, I danced uh, in this eh, country, I, I can't say the term you guys have said. It was country, a lot of cowboy hats. And uh, for the most part, I made pretty good money. Well, this, this one guy, he wanted no parts of my ass. He didn't, I mean, he, he didn't want any conversation. And I'm just like, damn. And he said, let me tell you something. I will never get a dance from you. White only. And it was so bold and blunt, I just started laughing. And I said, now that's some shit I can respect. I can respect you being upfront about your racism, your bigotry, and your bias. But got a goddamn problem about you smiling in my face, acting like you're my friend, and then I find out on Facebook and Twitter that you think I'm a goddamn nigger. I cannot stand hypocrites. And I can't stand it to the point that my kids are in charge of making sure that I don't veer on the path of hypocrisy. I hold myself accountable to my children because of my experiences in the church, because of my experiences in this community. I think one of the worst offenses anyone can have is being a goddamn hypocrite. I have no respect for a hypocrite. So if you're racist, just avoid me. I won't be mad. But I will be mad. You go, Bria, you were so funny yesterday. And the next thing I know, we become friends. And I find out that, OK, I was funny, but I wasn't that funny that you couldn't with, refrain from using racial epithets. Uh, just be honest. So I was on a leadership converse, uh, telephone conversation. And so on this call, you give an update on the things that you have on your plate. And I was just, oh, God, please don't start with me first on this call. So we get to this gentleman. And he basically is he's describing my symptoms, OK? Oh, he's just apathetic. And he was just like, I haven't had a meetup in months. And, and then me, I had the answer. I said, dude, you sound like you're burned out. Wait a minute. So am I. And because of this acknowledgement, see, we can't usually see these issues going on within ourselves. You know how somebody can be in a relationship and we can just psychoanalyze and we'll go Dr. Phil on them. And we're in the same predicament and we can't see it. 
That's exactly what my situation was. I thought I was a slacker. And see, I'm, I had black non-believers of Detroit, and me and Matt, these are our best friends. And what is that going to sound like? My best friend, my sister, finds out that I have not been faithful with these meetups, honey. I just, I, but I can't tell her, but I, I got to be that friend. And I guess I can click and just do a quick meetup, but I don't want to fucking have a meetup. I, I, I don't care right now. But then I remembered who Mandisa was. That's my motherfucking best friend. If I can't talk to her, I can't talk to nobody. Alex got her own little special inbox. Y'all better talk to me. Y'all better talk to me because I'm on the edge and I'm about to jump. That support system is important because we give and give and give and we find ourselves depleted and we have no one to pour back into us and what happens? Resentment because I resented everybody I came across. Okay, so I looked for some empirical evidence for secular burnout and surprise, there wasn't any. But there was information for pastors. Do you know, every month, 1,500 pastors leave their ministry? Their burnout rate is five years. Can you believe I felt sorry for them? that empath shit. Five years. Guess what year this is for me? Five. I've been doing this five long, struggling, hard, broke as a joke, years, juggling my mama, my children, my job, those emails where they said they're going to commit goddamn suicide. Where you get served the month of your birthday with papers because an atheist has sued your ass for $50,000. For $50,000, one fucking dollar. Yeah, that's me. I'm being fucking sued for a Facebook comment. True story. So there's an article, Psychology Today, Telltale Signs of Burnout. I'm going to read this fast because I know when I watch a PowerPoint, I go, oh, fuck. So I'm going to try to <laughs> read this fast. And when I read this, tears. It occurs because high achievers are often so passionate about what they do, they tend to ignore the fact they're working exceptionally long hours, taking on heavy workloads, put enormous pressure on themselves to excel, which is the perfect recipe for burnout. Do you know how many times people tell me I'm not superwoman? I'm not Wonder Woman. But for some reason, I feel like the secular movement didn't exist until Brie entered the foray. And if I extract myself, what the fuck gonna happen? Like a mother, just like a mother. Oh, honey, I'll watch the, I'll watch the baby. Shit. If I, leave, what's, what's, if I leave this baby with dad, what's gonna happen? I mean, you write the checklist, you give all the numbers, the contact numbers, but even though you've done all of that due diligence, you're still not confident. I think about if I left this community, what about the people? Symptoms of burnout, according to Dr. Borg, who is also the uh, author of the Psychology Today, Telltale signs, chronic fatigue, check, insomnia, forgetfulness, physiological, uh, which I had, headaches, 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 
gastro issues, dizziness, weakened immune systems, loss of appetite. Well, I ain't gonna front on that part. <laughs> Sister gained a couple of pounds. Me and that Kroger fried chicken. It got me through. Anxiety, pessimism. Every time somebody has something good about the community to say, I counted it with something negative. Detachment, yes. Apathy, yes. Irritability, yes. Poor performance. After that flint water, that drive, where I was so disappointed because little old Bridget in Detroit had to put together a drive to get oppressed people clean water. And we have organizations who have thousands, hundreds, millions of dollars. Do I need to finish that sentence? Did those families appreciate the efforts? Yes, they did. 48,000 bottles of water, four truckloads where people took time off work to help, 16,000 baby wipes, but we damn sure could have did better. I've seen this community contribute to a GoFund and raise enormous amounts of money I'm not going to say these people predicaments are important, but I think water is a huge big deal. And we raised $7,000, and I'm thankful for every contributor because they didn't have to help. But my question is, what about the major organizations? What about those who said, well, Bria, if you need me? See, one thing, I have pride. I do. Pride has got me in places, and pride has closed doors in my faces. But that, even though it was on paper a success, my heart hurt it. And on top of that, this is why I'll never have Hemet Meta share any goddamn story that relates to me. Because for him to be a non-white, he has some of the most racist followers I've ever seen. Do you know, when he shared this water fund, this water drive, I was accused of lying, that this was fake. And someone believed it because guess who called me? State of Michigan. We've had an anonymous call for misappropriation of funds. Said I squandered $7,000. Fortunately, I was prepared and I kept every goddamn receipt and I took pictures because some of those receipts had faded Sent it to Ms. Valonk, it's like Rush Valonk. Sent it to her. We have what we need. Case closed. Thank you, Ms. Crutchfield. But I just want you to understand this is not a joke. So we have these people within the community who want to be secular famous. Those are the people to watch out for. Because they're going to do whatever it takes to get here, but they don't want to do the work it takes to get here. Be careful of those who don't refer to the people. Be careful of those people who are I, 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 I. How did you? When they ask, how did you get here? Run! They are poison in this community. Absolute poison. We have somebody in this community now who's a fake ass feminist, but in reality, he's a hateful, hateful misogynist. And he's black, and his followers are fucking white men. They love his black ass. 
and they do his dirty work. Some sick shit in this community. Take an inventory. Doc suggests you make a list of all the situations that cause you how to fit, that, all the situations that make you feel the way you feel. I did that. And it kept coming back to this community. Write down at least one way to modify that situation. I ain't need to write it. I knew what to say. Deuces, bitch. <laughs> just say no. Just say, just, just say no. Because sometimes we feel obligated to people and we want to help the community and we want to please people so bad because we don't want to be a disappointment. I hate disappointing people. I just do. I hate it. But I can't be any good for you if I'm no good for myself. So, no. Take breaks between commitments. That's where I am. I just got invited to speak um, yesterday to go to speak at an event. When? Next year. Okay, I should be straight next year. I can't do it. I, can't, I cannot do it, people. I can't. Unplug. I, you better. Sometimes it's just best for people to not be able to have a low jack on your ass. Don't answer the email. Just archive those, those inbox messages. Did you know you can archive an mess uh, inbox message? Do it. You'll be better for it. Resist the urge to take it home. Just don't, because it affected every part of my life. Don't let it infiltrate you the way I allowed it to infiltrate me. I'm telling you, this secular burnout is no joke. You don't even want to see a damn red letter. You don't want to see an A. You don't want to see a science symbol. You're like, fuck you, Bill Nye. I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. Fuck you, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm sick of your ass, too. That's just where I was. And I love me some Neil deGrasse Tyson. But not right now. I ain't loving him right now. Not right now. Find support. Where I am right now, I have rediscovered and discovered my passion. I'm in a new phase now because my grandchildren, y'all know how I feel about my grandchildren. I will fight every one of you about my grandchildren. But see, now they're in kindergarten. So now this is like really fun. They're independent. They get to tell me stories. Some of them make me mad because I want to come up to that school and I want to get with them. But you know, I have to trust that my grandsons have this. I got this artsy nature with inside of me that I've tapped into and I'm doing a little something. I'm taking some pictures. I'm learning how to edit. I'm kissing Alex's ass so he can show me his little secrets. I've been scrolling through Josiah Manning's Facebook like, damn, I wonder what aperture was that, what the F stop was. See, I'm learning some shit outside this community. Do it. Distance, distance, distance. I had to put myself as far away as possible from this community. And let me tell you how you know you have some damn good friends. Everybody know? Where Mandisa, you see Bree. You see Bree, you see Mandisa. She's a good cop, I'm the goddamn bad cop. I don't care. But this woman is so goddamn in touch, okay? We have talked on the phone four hours, six hours, seven hours, every fucking day. Every goddamn day. But she knows I am going to hell through. She don't fucking call me. And she knows that's what I need. She put me first instead of herself. See, that's a friend who understands you and isn't going to try to dissuade you and say, girl, ain't nothing wrong with you. You cool. You No. I don't know how the hell she keep doing all these goddamn. Why don't you tell them no sometime, Mandy? Fuck them. But see, she's the extrovert. She loves talking. I can't stand talking. 
I know, I know, I know. I know, I just, I know. But I asked Lauren what my response was when she said, oh, there's not going to be a Q&A. Shit, I almost twerked my, uh, like, what the? <laughs> because I'm okay here. Once we have that Q&A, I have no control. And I don't know what the hell you're about to ask me. Am I going to be able to answer it? Are they going to be an asshole? Are they going to be sarcastic? And then I'm going to have to fight coming up out of pocket and not being that, that hood? That ratchet? Decisions, decisions. Goddamn decisions. So, believe it or not, this was my baby. My pride and joy. Minority atheist of Michigan. And my mind circled back. That wagon was like, you know what? Uh, I think it's time that you let this go. It's, it's time to let ma'am go. It's, it's time, Bree. And I said, you know, it's time. And we had a farewell dinner. I deleted the meetup, and even though it <gasps> Close the Facebook, burden lifted. I have not regretted it since. Sometimes these decisions seem so destructive and cruel. But some decisions, it's just time to let it go. It's just time to, you know, it's gonna jump the shark. It is, you got black non-believers, why do you need a minority eight? Well, just let it go. See, I think also my frustration came in, I can't control people so that I can get the desired outcomes. And since I can't change the actions or the directions of the community, I realized I had to change myself. First thing, stop reading these goddamn blogs. Why, why, you, why do you do that to yourself? Why, no, no, these brave assholes are going to come out. And it's just like every time I read these destructive comments, it was just like somebody just a body just bam, bam. And it's just like, you know, Brie, you, you really don't have to, maybe if you stop providing your head, you won't get put in a headlock. I mean, it, maybe if you just back up, there won't be access for those body shots. Maybe your headaches would diminish if you would just Minimize your stress. So I had to stop reading blogs. I had to leave Facebook groups. I had to do what's necessary for me so that I don't catch a case and go to jail. And then there go the blogs making the blog post about me going to jail. Say no, I can't even reiterate that enough. Say no, and I had to understand every fight is not mine. See, I had to fight because I was a Jehovah Witness kid. Them little fucks didn't give a damn that it wasn't my fault. I didn't choose to be a Jehovah Witness. They didn't care. Parents didn't understand that your kid's being teased merciless, mercilessly. Tongue tied, sorry. But I've been fighting since the fifth grade. I will defend myself, but I can't defend everybody. I can't do it. There's not enough. I've gained weight, yes, but there's still not enough for me to go around and fight for everybody. Institute balance by seeking outside interest. You have to. This thing will just eat you up. And I don't want you guys to be as miserable and negative and a damn Debbie Downer. And you don't nobody want to call you because you just fucked up. And you, you, I, I don't want that for you. I really don't. Is the gossip good? Hell yeah, the gossip good. But I need more than that. The tea is very good within our community. It is. Y'all spill some good shit and I just lap, lap, lap it up. 
but we need more. We got to do better. So in conclusion, I ain't, I've done no empirical evidence, but yes, in my boldness, I've drawn my own goddamn conclusion. Don't nobody know you better than you. And don't nobody know me better than me. You have to do what's best for you. And you have to be honest with yourself. God damn it, why couldn't I learn this shit in my early 30s? Why did I have to become almost 50 to learn that I can't control everything? That this will eat me up. That it's not people's fault that you're angry because you made these decisions. I know that sounds so basic. It does. But this is true. And you know why? Because I've been in control since nine years old. I have been the responsible one in my family. Bridget, go make the coffee. Bridget, where's your daddy's shit? Bridget! Bridget, Bridget, so if you are young, I'm combing hair. If you're doing things at a young age that adults should do, and it doesn't stop, and it continues, and the expectation is for you to continue that at 15 and at 18 with some shit jump off in your family and everybody calling you because you, you the hood. They need that hood right now. They need that hood rat to take care of business. When you have been appointed a leader without your permission at a young age, when do you know how to turn it off? You fucking don't. Until your mind said, I call bullshit. Now, what works for me? It's not going to work for you. Some of y'all, y'all warriors, you can read these damn um, blog posts, these comments, you respond. I don't see a thousand comment thread like, don't you get bored? Like, this is the, this has been the same topic for five, six, seven days. What the fuck is missing in your life that you're still talking about? I don't get it. It's a pissing top contest. Both of y'all gonna get wet. That's what happens in a pissing contest. There's no clear winner. Help me. Guilt? Do I feel guilty? Uh, no. No. Mm -mm. That's church. I ain't in no fucking church. I ain't repenting because I decided to make the decision that was best for me, was best for my family, was best that'll help me remain employed. I don't feel guilty. And fuck whoever attempts to make me feel guilty because that's happened. Huh, that's funny. I shouldn't dissolve minority atheists of Michigan. This is the first time I've seen your ass in a year and a half. Where the hell were you when I was struggling? Get the fuck out my face. True story. True story. If you must walk, or run, do it. Self-care, it's called self-care, not they gonna care for you. Self-care, and we, especially women, are so busy caring for other people, caring for the organizations, caring for the community, that we forget ourselves. I think some of the cruelest shit I've seen in this community is where men taunt triggering. Like, you, you weak, you, uh, uh, trigger one and trigger one and you, you weak. Like, trauma doesn't happen to women every fucking day. But aren't we supposed to be the intelligent community, the smart community? And the religious people are supposed to be the not so smart community. But I say some clusterfuck fuck shit in this community that I can't understand. If a woman or if a man said that he has been traumatized and would have appreciated a content warning or a trigger warning, everybody don't want to see death porn. I don't want to see dead bodies. Put the damn dot, 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 dot. And if I see that, I'm scrolling. 
Everybody isn't as strong as you when it comes to death porn or reading rape stories. Really? Do you, honestly, do you kind of understand why the fuck I feel the way I feel? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be honest. I'm trying to, I cannot talk about anything I don't know. We got some fucked up shit. But let me tell you, we got some awesome people too. So I want you to think I'm just being a wowsy, wowsy, woo, woo. Because I met amazing people here at this event. Lauren Lang, god damn, she's like she's 12. <laughs> I'm like, Lauren Lang, okay, all right, Lauren Lang. Lauren Lang sent me this, this form to fill out to, uh, you know, get me out here. The most goddamn thorough fucking form I had ever filled. It, actually, I've never filled out a form. I just respond to an email. The shit. Now, I didn't sign no non-disclosure, did I? Don't worry about it. Okay. Can't remember, but let me paraphrase. What, 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 what airline? Fuck, I get to choose. What, what, what seat? What seat you want? Fuck, I get to. You want a mic, a lavalier? You tell us how you want us to make this happen for your ass. Fuck it, chill. Fuck, I'll take a level here. <laughs> hmm. Look, I'm doing a TED talk in this bitch. <laughs> this shit is so goddamn organized, okay? And then you say, free. How the fuck are you this organized and goddamn free, Lauren? I don't get it. I, I don't get it. This is one of the most friendliest organized. I can't get it. It was how many pages? Come on, come, Lauren, keep it real. How many pages was that form? Uh, Seven fucking pages. <laughs> this is what I'm used to. Hey, Bree, are you available on this day? Yep. Okay. We booked you on this. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. Be here at this time. Um, no. That's not going to work. Okay. This time. Okay. Boom. No, that, that, that's not Lauren. Seven goddamn pages I had to fill out. Because you know what? She didn't want there to be any miscommunications, any misunderstandings, and because there's some fucking divas and divos in this community. Oh, yeah. I done heard about some of y'all. <laughs> y'all, you see how I've disassociated? Y'all a goddamn trip. <laughs> There's no messiahs, real or imagined. Ain't nobody coming to save us. So why do I think I have it in me to come and save everybody? Because it's been my expectation since I was nine years old. Establish realistic goals. Today, I'm not going to cuss out somebody if they say something I disagree with. <laughs> um, since the Trump campaign, since the, the election, I've only twice. But they came to my wall. I fucking own that bitch. <laughs> my wall, my rules, and you will not be contentious on my shit. I didn't even block them. I just cussed them the fuck out. I haven't heard from them since. Return, maybe, maybe not. But I will not ever jump in full force like I did before. I can't totally walk away. Because just as I depend on Greta and Ingrid, two for one, Mandy, Monette, other brilliant women and men in this community, they also depend on me. I want to be 100% selfish. I swear I do. But I can't. So 
I have just like two toes in this bitch. Just, I mean, I'm here, here, but not here, here. If you decide to say, fuck this, I ain't never coming back, guess what? You're going to have so many people that wouldn't blame you. They're going to applaud you, and they're going to say, I wish I could do it too, but I have too much invested. Do what is right for you because you have to live with this decision. We have given so much of ourselves, and there comes a time where you got to turn it off and say, you know what, this is about me right now. And that's what I've done. Huh? No, I'm going to. I'm going to think about Brie. Well, the grandkid, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. You see this money? I'm going to buy me a goddamn camera. I'm not, they got enough damn clothes. They got enough damn toys. I'm going to buy me a goddamn Nikon camera, bitches. And that's what I goddamn did. Then I bought me a little telephoto lens. Then I bought me a soft box to make the shadows and the lights and soft and... See, I'm excited. That excitement that I had for the community that I have with photography. I bought me some acrylic paints. I don't know if knitting or crosswords or is, is Sudoku still a thing? I don't, I, don't, I don't know, but whatever it is, learning how to change a tire. Find something that excites you because this flame will flicker. It's okay. Because no matter what happens, this is, this right here, right here. Can y'all read that? This motherfucker ain't going nowhere. The community ain't going nowhere. So take all the time that you need. It's fine. Put yourself first so that we don't have to mourn you. So they don't have to miss you. Take this time out to take care of yourself. And you're going to be appreciated. It doesn't matter if we see you or not, if you disengage or not. There is nothing wrong with putting yourself first because people do it every day. But don't let what happened to me happen to you. I have found a passion, and I hope like hell you guys find yours. I'm done. Ah!